Hey gang, what's good? Welcome to another Morrowind Mechanics video guide. This time, we're looking at the custom spell creation system, or spell making. Similar to enchanting, this is an immensely powerful game system, and at higher levels, it's super fun to play around with. Also like enchanting, it essentially has no tutorial, and new players may not even be aware that such a system exists in the game at all. Heck, at least enchanting has a skill dedicated to itself to let you know it exists in the first place. Not to mention, Skyrim, perhaps the most played Elder Scrolls game, at least as of this guide's creation, doesn't even feature spellmaking. Anyway, as with all of my Morrowind Mechanics videos, if you're looking for something specific, like a formula, I've got timestamps in the description. Okay, let's begin with the basics. Since, as I said, this may very well be the first time you've ever even heard of Morrowind's spellmaking feature. Unlike enchanting or other crafting skills, you cannot create spells on your own. Instead, you need to find an NPC who offers the service. Thankfully, they're very easy to find. Look no further than your local Mages Guild, Tribunal Temple, or Imperial Cult. There's other places as well, but most, not all of them, have someone who will offer the spellmaking service. So, once you've found your spellmaker, you'll be able to pop open the UI and get to work. It's important to know that when you're creating custom spells, you can only create spells using effects that you already have in your spells menu. Think of it as a toolkit. For example, if you want to create a powerful health healing spell, you need to already know some form of healing spell. This can be from a spell you purchased already, or from the spells you get at character creation for free. However, it cannot be sourced from a spell contained within an enchanted item, for example the ring that you find in the opening moments of the game. If you want more on those free spells I mentioned, check out my brief video covering just that. Now I should also point out that when it comes to spell effects that fortify attributes or skills, you only need to know one such spell for either effect. For example, if you learn a Fortify Luck spell, then you will also have access to all other Fortify attribute effects when at the Spellmaker, or when performing enchanting for that matter. Anyway, now that we know all of the basics, Let's get to covering the various formulae involved here. First and foremost, let's cover perhaps the most important formula involved in creating custom spells. That's the Magicka Cost Formula. It's on screen now. As you can see, there's essentially just one formula, with a few alterations depending on what type of targeting the spell uses. This formula is used to calculate the Magicka Cost of each effect within the entirety of a spell. To get the Magicka cost of the spell as a whole, simply add together each effect's individual Magicka cost. Don't worry, although they do appear quite similar, there's no compounding cost here like there is with the enchanting cost formula. It's worth pointing out that if you do set any of these variables to zero in the spellmaking UI, they'll still behave in the formula as though they were set to 1. For the sake of easy reference, I'll also have a link included in the description to a page on UESP.net that lists the base costs of each effect in the entire game. Now, as I mentioned, this formula is very nearly identical to the enchanting cost formula. That said, perhaps the most important thing about it is precisely how it's different. Specifically, I'm talking about the duration. Right there, you can see that duration is always increased by one extra point. Mind you, this doesn't affect the in-game durations, it's just used here for this formula. Anyway, this means that you'll always have at least a 2 times duration multiplier. Now that gets really punishing when you start working with really high magnitude spells. You can easily offset this by reducing magnitudes and in turn increasing durations to get sort of the same effect just over an extended period of time. If any of that was hard to follow, 
you just need to remember to favor low magnitudes and longer durations if you want to keep Magicka costs down. Obviously, this isn't always ideal or even possible with some spells. For example, a spell that heals yourself for 2 HP per second over 50 seconds isn't going to be able to save your life the same way as a spell that does 25 HP per second over 4 seconds. It's a whole lot more, a lot faster. Before we move on from the Magicka cost formula, it's important to know that the pre-made spells available from vendors do not follow this formula at all. This is used just for custom-made spells. In fact, you'll find that most pre-made spells from vendors cost far less Magicka to cast compared to a completely identical custom spell. I believe custom spells usually have a Magicka cost that's roughly double the amount of Magicka as a pre-made spell. I can only assume that this was done to offset the power potential there in creating your own spells, but frankly it's hardly a limiting factor when you consider how easy it is to make enchantments or potions that boost our Magicka reserves to insane levels. Alright, as you may have noticed earlier, I said that the Magicka cost formula is arguably the most important out of them all. That's because two other formulae, that being the cast chance and the spell's gold pricing, both rely on it. Let's begin with the cast chance formula. It's on screen now. Now let's draw some conclusions on this formula to keep in mind as we're playing so we can maximize our chance to cast. By far the most important component is the skill relevant to the spell we're attempting to cast. Every level in our spell's skill represents a 2% increase to cast chance. Since we're dealing with custom spells here, it's absolutely possible that you're considering creating a spell that utilizes effects from more than one spell school. So let's say for example that we want to create a sanctuary spell that also fortifies our strength, so that way we're more difficult to hit in combat, but we also deal more damage ourselves. The formula then uses whichever skill is lowest. So if our character has 50 illusion levels, but only 30 restoration levels, the restoration skill is what's used in the formula. The formula also updates itself as our skill levels change, so if you're fond of using multiple effects like this, it's kind of important to keep your spell skills on par with one another. Anyway, after spell skill, every 5 points of willpower and 10 points of luck add 1 additional percent to our cast chance. Then our cast chance is reduced directly by the magicka cost of said spell and any sound debuffs currently active on our character. It's very much possible to create a spell with such a high Magicka cost that it's impossible to cast even with 100 in every stat. This is where fortifying stats beyond 100 comes in handy. If you're interested in that, have a look at my alchemy video in which we go over creating super potions to boost stats into the thousands of points. Because of all the additional work involved, a lot of folks just prefer using enchanted items with on-use effects as they always go off without a hitch. The only catch is that the effects on such items are limited by the enchanting capacity inherent in every item, whereas custom-made spells have no such limitation. Well, finally, going back to the formula, all of that is impacted by the fatigue modifier. Simply put, if you don't already know, the fatigue modifier gets you an 0.75 times modifier at empty fatigue, or a 1.25 times modifier at full fatigue. It's worth pointing out that the spellmaking UI always displays a spell's cast chance as if you were attempting to cast the spell at half fatigue, so that's a neutral 1.0 modifier. If you do want more information on things like spell damage and resistances or absorption, check out my Magicka combat video. Now, let's quickly have a look at the other formula I mentioned that's impacted by the Magicka cost of our spell, that being the purchase price of the spell we're creating. 
it's on screen now. As you can see, it's quite simply the spell's magicka cost multiplied by 7. There is no way to alter the price through things like disposition or having a high personality. Well, that ought to cover all of our bases when it comes down to creating custom spells. I had considered throwing in some custom spell recommendations for folks seeking inspiration, but I'm already planning to cover each spell school individually, and I think they'll be a better fit in their own respective videos. Speaking of which, be sure to check a look at all of my other Morrowind Guide videos. There's tons of useful information there. I've also got a weekly Morrowind playthrough going on maximum difficulty. Tune in for new ones every Monday, or heck, there's even a substantial backlog of them now. Nonetheless, thanks for watching this one. Peace.